Good afternoon, everyone. This is Nagarajan. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, we will we'll publish the test results. Uh, I think you would have got the score already. Answer keys we will be publishing in the JIT tonight. OK. How many of you wrote the test? Can you please raise the hands? I could see only uh, 600 to 700 people. There are actually people around 3,500 to 4,000 attending. A lot of people in groups. But only when we say ex test, the tooth is not a graded test. Still, there is a phobia for the test. Uh, don't worry about the test. The tests are there only to help you. So attend. You write this wrong, no problem, no harm. We are not going to give any arrears to you. Okay. Don't don't worry about that at all. <laughs> Good. Uh, in fact, overall, totally around uh, 1,050 people wrote the test. As I said, the total strength of attending all the programs around anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000. It varies from day to day. Uh, one day, a lot of people come. One day, people are less. People attending in groups. But these MCQs are there to help you to uh, uh, fine-tune you. Don't worry. <laughs> Today, I want to give a perspective on DevOps. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. So this is my screen. Uh, if you look at any operating system, right? You will, uh, you will do dealing with files you will deal with files you will have a folder you will have a subfolder then you will have files under the folder you add a file delete file change the uh, security of the file so if i go to this file do a right click uh, show more options or properties you could see all these things and then there are security aspects this is exactly where you are read write execute that comes the only difference between and you go to a notepad file all right today is uh, 6th of february 2023 devops the session so files folders processes so you go to any of these process skype or other install of software you will be installing you'll have processes you will installs and then uninstalls and then list. This is what you do. Only difference is Windows and Mac have a great UI. Not all Linux and Unix have a great UI. So which is the Linux that has got a good UI uh, in your opinion, Krishna? <coughs> Ubuntu, uh, yeah, Ubuntu. Yeah, Ubuntu. So Ubuntu, again, you will have the same thing. Whatever you do to the shell, you will do on the uh, uh, UI also. That is the only difference. So Ubuntu has UI. But we are so used to Microsoft for a longer time than the Linux. So it may take some time for you to adjust. And again, have you gone through uh, FTP and other things, uh, Krishna? No, today won't be. Not yet. Okay, today. So yeah. what I do is, for me, I go to the notepad like this. For me, highlighting, copy paste, etc., is very easy. Whereas doing through VA editor is a pain. So there are now tools which you can do it on your Windows environment. Pass it back to Linux environment just by one one uh, click. So the the di real difference between uh, Windows and uh, Linux is very very minimal nowadays. With Unix, it was good. But it was it was huge because we didn't have a proper UI. Whereas now with Ubuntu and other stuff, we don't see any difference at all. In fact, many people use Ubuntu as the base OS in their uh, system. But server side. 
server side linux rules no doubt okay in fact for the last uh, 20 years the last 20 years we have all our servers only in linux we i never had a windows server for our company so server side linux rules absolutely no doubt so you need to know on the server side you may not have always ubuntu you may have red hat you may have fedora you may have uh, uh, some other one right centos so you may have to know all these concepts in the basic os system that is why we have this let me show you another screen apache you may all know uh, apache is the one that has got lot of open source products underneath that so if you see 3 350 plus projects and um, two bytes two petabytes of source code so many people 8740 committers 49000 coding people 6.4 lakhs people contributing in terms of testing documenting this is 22 billion worth of software is zero cost see this is the revolution these guys are real real donors these guys are real real contributors game changers of the world if you look at their products the product list in alphabetical order whole lot of uh, right from hadoop to uh, apache tomcat server to cassandra what not everything is available right here if you see here kudu hadoop uh, do you see hadoop here or something uh, uh, hadoop here coach db apache tomcat uh, kafka all these things right these are all the ones that are uh, luzin search engine top notch products amazing products this is happening because of open source and remember that in software if someone has to make this download available okay if this download has to be available pretty much we have this uh, git open mentor github right so you go to soft skills or full stack development every day there are so many commitments uh, commits code commits are getting in and you could see 2nd february there is one code given 6th february that is another code given everywhere whatever is available whatever is done by people that should be made available to other people and who enables that in fact krishnan and his team only created the github repository they push the code or documents on a daily basis in our organization for our clients every day in and day out there are at least 20 projects going on on a daily basis every day this devops is the one that builds the software that pushes the software to the right place that maintains production this is this is main thing devops maintains all environments usually there will be a development environment pc has to be made ready software has to be installed access rights must be given development then devops is needed testing then staging before going to production then production at least there will be four environments for all the software so we have our own test environment our own development environment our own production and staging 
every day every single day okay let me just for a moment stop my screen i'm going to show you something this is our live skype okay is our live skype just one second i'm just going to once again share my screen at least i can show our office stuff to you not a problem i'm going the skype showing the skype now if you look here in this one chat okay lot of issues closed this that etc now someone has to verify whether mail is gone where mails are being sent or not then someone has to say whether the admin uh, uh, i hope admin type is available in production then jeno is saying yes done then somebody is doing them you will have a demo please deploy jeno is mentioning deployed in data libre environment and production environment right this is one rolling notice board for our company of this just one product hyper automation we are talking about so many instruction is coming devops please move this testing team says this is not working somebody says it is working somebody says it is not working somebody says it has to be deployed now mail is sent or not okay all these things are possible only by devops devops is the bridge between dev test users if a developer if all my developers do not come to work okay one day i'm 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 okay with that not a problem all testers do not come to work for one day i am okay with that but all devops do not come to work for a day for some reason company cannot run because if anything goes wrong if anything has to be installed anything has to be started devops is a must and now i will show you one more screen imagine apache is maintaining so many products and i am showing you one more screen this is apache's daily test schedule only for testing you see here builds.apache.org build meaning developers code you have to build you have to take the code compile it build it as a package push it somewhere else for testing or production if you see here lot of products for every product it is showing build 23 kafka a build is in progress so many tests are being done if i click here okay under kafka <coughs> what is going on on february 6th there is one commit that is happening there is one minor update and they put it in the in the in the environment auto testing is happening it says failed for 2 hours and 30 minutes 20 minutes un unstable build who maintains all these things devops it is devops okay so many products yet development testing commitment all happen okay atlas product so my faces product royal product lucene product solar product i click here what happened to the solar product again this is the last build 40 minutes ago it was finished great whether it's a it's a green or success anything it will say right so what happens with in in industry is remember these things your ide coding environment <coughs> developers use it's to tools like selenium jmeter and build on to a deployment 
auto test release and from coding environment multiple developers will push code to jit and build the application this developer's job this developer's job devops install devops 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 testing on devops devops after coding what happens qa and devops they take over without them product will not be a success so understanding operating system and database is a very very important area especially operating system part the reason why devops came developer rqa should be able to build deploy no i will wait for only that devops person to come everyone should know devops if you need to know devops devops needs strong os funda if you do not have a strong os funda you cannot get into devops lot of you go to indeed let us see in indeed whether there is a job posting for okay indeed devops what happened devops engineer see you got lot of search results coming up you can narrow down uh, does it show how many res uh, search results came let us say uh, date post bengaluru karnataka right 1162 jobs in bengaluru alone so the reason is devops definitely need a fundamental in os and database because programs when you shut down the system program stop running machine stops running but data is there in the database stored in the disk that doesn't die so database and os is extremely important on a daily basis is this concept clear to you all i stopped my screen sharing is this topic clear this concept the importance of this don't underestimate oh installation ah oh uninstallation ah oh file ah everything does matter if one thing goes wrong your company comes down so devops is and there's a huge opportunity without even knowing testing without even knowing development you can still be in software industry and be a key person that is the power of devops with that i hand it over to uh krishnan krishnan you can hand it take out over okay thank you sir i will exit the class you can continue with whatever today's portion yeah thank you thank you wonderful thank you so good evening to all so today what we are going to see is the topics is the va editor and the grip command in linux and the word count and how to see the user we, we were created the user right the user were uh, there in the linux system already there right so how to check what are all the users are there in the linux system and how to check the os versions and how to know the processor information so these are the things we are going to see today so one by one we will go through first let us check the os session so in windows i am sharing my screen so 
hope you are able to see my screen. Please confirm by raising your hand. So in Windows, how do you check the OS version? By clicking on the uh, file explorer and uh, right click the DPC and go to click on the properties. You will have the OS information, Windows specific. See here the Windows edition. What is the version of Windows and what is that uh, type? It is a single language, something like that. And what is the build number? Something like that. So, like that, how do we know the OS? What is the OS version if you, if you are not aware of that? Say, for example, uh, in your uh, company they have given the server so you want to know that what is the OS installed in the server so through the service. so how do you know that so for that we need to use the command call slash etc slash etc i have already told all the configuration files will be there in the etc so the OS related configuration information will be under the lsb iphone release file so inside that those information already stored so if you uh, see the file content without opening the file you you are we are going to use the cat command so i am using the cat command to, to um, display the content of the lsb iphone release file so it is a file so it displays the version so what is the distribution i am having i am having the ubuntu distribution on what is the release so what is the uh, version it displays the 16.04 so i am having the 16.04 and distribution it, it is it, it gives the full thing, full information the ubuntu os and what is the version and it, the lts stand for the uh, long term support so it has a long term support okay so this is what uh, you can get the information of the os okay so, like that in Windows, you will have the processor information here, device specific. So, what is the processor Intel Core i3 processor? I am having the i3 processor, and what is the clock speed? Something like that. So, in Linux, we can get those information by typing the command called lscp. it will use the information of the processor i'm having the 32 bit and 64 bit both and uh, architecture it is both and this is my processor intel the same processor because i am i have installed my ubuntu on top of my windows so it is showing the same processor and how many cores i have totally this is all the information okay so You will get to know the information about the process, uh, processor. Okay. So the next thing we are going to see is the FTP and the WinSCP. So FTP is nothing but a file transfer protocol, which we used to transfer the file over the internet from. Uh, we have stored the file in a centralized location, and we by accessing the FTP, we can get the file from your local. So that everybody can share the file using the FTP. So if I am uploading the, I am uploading some files in the inside the FTP, so that other person can access the same file through the FTP if they are connected with the internet in remote location. So, so for the requirement for the FTP is you have to install the FTP server in my Ubuntu machine. I have already installed the FTP that you don't know uh, that you, you don't need to install the FTP. I have already installed the VS FTP tool in the my Ubuntu machine. So to know the status of that, I am in my system the VS FTP is running. So how we are going to access the FTP? So through the client, you can access the FTP. There are a lot of FTP client tools available. The most famous tool is called FileZilla. 
so i have installed the ftp in my ubuntu machine in the terminal in the uh, ubuntu server so from the server i am not able to put the file or get the file it is not possible because i have only limited to the command line not the gui graphical interface i don't have so for that purpose only we are going to use the ftp so to, uh, for accessing the ftp you need to have the host name and username and password so i have already have it so by opening the filezilla software you need to give the host name here so how do you get the host name by typing the config if in we linux it is if config windows only we are going to use the command called ip config so by executing that command ip config we are able to get the ip address okay so this is the my ubuntu server ip address that is 192.160.1.9 so i am typing it here i have already created the ftp user in my system that i will show you later the username is ami and the password also i have created already so i have entered the password uh, by default the ftp will work on the port 22 we already uh, talk about the port so every software or every services running by using the software port so ftp is run uh, running by using the port 22 so we need to give the port as well so after giving all those information host name and username and password you need to click on the quick command so if you are seeing in my right hand side there is no folder and files are not displayed if the moment i click on the quick connect we are able to get the content on my right hand side see here so I have created uh, the user under the home directory. The by default, the user home directory will be created under slash home, and under the user directory, I have created a folder called FTP. Under the FTP, I have created a folder called files. So under the files, if I can put the file.txt, I can transfer it to my local machine. And if you want to transfer the files into your win, uh, Ubuntu machine from your Windows, you can simply just drag and drop something like that. So, this file will be transferring from your Windows machine to the Linux machine. If you go to that uh, Linux machine, pd slash home slash home ftp under the files, you'll be able to see the .json file. Just we have just no we have copied. Okay, so same like you can copy from your copy the file from your Linux machine to your Windows by using the FTP. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. Okay, nowadays FTP is most common. Nowadays we are going to use the one more uh, tool by, for copying the file from the Windows machine to Linux machine, Linux machine to Windows machine, vice versa. The tool name is called WinSCP okay this is a tool these are all the open and open source tools so you just download it you just google it and download it okay okay typing it in browser and as you download you will get from here okay so by clicking on this icon the WinSCP will get downloaded. Okay, so I have opened the WinSCP. It is also using the same FTP. Pro if you if you are able to see the file protocol, it is also using the FTP, secured FTP, secured file transfer protocol. It, the protocol it is used. So the same thing I am going to give here the host name. I am going to use the username. Is my system username and the password. So for this WinSCP, you don't need the FTP installed in your Linux server. Either FTP is there or not, that doesn't matter for WinSCP. 
for the FTP client, you need to have the FTP server configured in your Ubuntu server. But in the but for the WinSCP tool, you don't need to have the FTP server installed in your Linux server. Either it is there or not, that doesn't matter. You can uh, with specific to FTP, you can access only the uh, folders under the FTP. You by using the file the log, but in the uh, Win SCP, you can access the files under the user's home directory. Whatever the user you are logged into, you can access all the files and folder, whatever belongs to the Ubuntu user, you can access. You can copy, you can edit, uh, or whatever you, if you want to do, you can do it in a graphical interface. So I'm going to log in as a Ubuntu user. So in the left hand side panel, you are seeing some files and folder that is, uh, that is, uh, that folder belongs to my Windows systems folder. See if, if you're able to see that C colon users my PC desktop. So these files are will be in my Windows desktop. The right hand side files and folder belongs to my Ubuntu server, which is under the slash home and slash Ubuntu folder. So if you want to open the log file, you can directly opening by right clicking here. Instead of that, uh, getting into the terminal and putting the VA command and putting the file name, you can directly open using the WinACP, okay? You see here the file got opened and if you want to edit the file, you can edit. If you want to remove the content, if you want to add the content, everything you can do here itself. And when, when you are done with that, you can just closing. While closing, it will ask you for the save uh, option. You can save. That's it. The file will be saved in your, saved in your uh, Ubuntu machine. If you want to transfer the files, you can just drag and you can just drag and drop. Simply like this. So the TCP Java file will be in our Linux machine under the Ubuntu home folder. Why you want to see that? By doing that. Slash home slash Ubuntu. TCP Java file should be there. Previously, it was not there. While well, I am copying it, it will be copied into your Ubuntu server. So these are the tools that we are generally used to, to transfer the file from Windows to Linux, Linux to Windows vice versa. Okay. The next thing we are going to see is the some of the useful features of VA editor. Okay. You all know about the VA. VA is a editor tool used to open a file and edit a file so you all know about that so i'm going to show the few useful pieces of the v editor so let me open the file called my file so by typing the va and put the file name so these are the content inside my file okay if i want to insert few more lines inside the VA editor you need to press the i button by pressing the i button if you see the top of the line it is not you are not in the insert mode the moment you press the i button it will take you to the insert mode so by typing the i button it will take you to the insert button and you can add whatever the line you want add a, a new line new line so by typing so if you want to exit from the insert mode you need to press the escape and if you want to save the file with the added line you need to press the shift colon and wq w stands for right and q stands for 
quit so the moment i press that shift colon and w q the the file will save the content and it will exit if you can see the line will be there okay so the next command we can see is that for re-editor is replacing a character if i want to replace the f character you need to press the r button and whatever the character you want instead of f you need to put g you can press g so by replacing you don't need to get into the insert mode without getting to the insert mode you need to press the r button first and whatever the character you want to change if i want to change from g to d and press the d button so it will automatically replace the character g in g by d so this is by doing this you can perform the replace of the character okay then i want to delete a line if you want to delete a line you don't need to uh, uh, press the back button or press the delete button by giving the dd command without going getting into the insert mode by pressing the dd so you need to press the dd button two consecutive times dd so the first line will gone from here okay by doing this you can do the delete operation so if you want to perform the undo operation so accidentally you are deleted the line so if you want to undo the line by just pressing the u button if you are pressing the u button then uh, it will undo the line whatever the line you are changed so by doing the pressing the u it will uh, do the undo operation okay so for deleting the line you need to press the dd button if you want to perform undo operation you need to press the u button okay for deleting the line you need to press the dd for twice okay not single d okay so if you want to delete multiple lines so how you are going to perform so by typing the numeric so say for example i want to delete the three lines from where my cursor is okay right now my cursor is on line one so from the starting of the line i want to delete the three lines by uh, for doing that you need to press the numeric three and type the dd so it will delete the first three lines for, for not the first three lines wherever your uh, cursor is there from there it will delete the three lines okay so by typing the numeric three and followed by the dd it will delete the three lines so i am and i am undoing it undoing it you you are going to use the y button okay so if i want to copy the line so how are going to do so without going getting into the inserting mode you need to press the y twice okay, for example i want to copy the third line y y i have copied and for pasting it you need to press the p button so the third line i have copied to the next line. okay so if you want to copy the same line for multiple line, multiple time the same thing just copy by typing yy and if you want to paste it four times just press the four and press the p so it will paste four times the same line it will paste four line okay now i am going to show you how to go to the beginning of the line so if you are in the middle of the something in the file so if you want to go to the beginning of the line by pressing the zero button right now i am in the insert mode so that's why it is not taking me to the thing so i am exiting from the inserting mode and i am pressing the zero it will take me to the in the following okay sorry it, it, it will take you to the uh, beginning of the line not the uh, starting of the file if i am 
in the middle of the something by pressing zero it will take you to the end of the line by pressing the dollar it will take you to the end of the line okay if the by pressing the zero it will take you to the end of the uh, starting of the line by pressing the dollar it will take you to the end of the line okay and if you want to search some specific word or some specific string say for example i want to search a word called technology inside the file so how we are going to do so for that we need to use the slash symbol and type the word you want to search so there is no pattern match because of i have typed the wrong spelling okay now the cursor is so right now i am here i am touching the technology the moment i type the technology and press the enter button it will take me to the uh, string or word okay so this is where you can search the word or search the specific string inside the file okay while using the slash it is searching in it is searched in a forward manner if you want to search it in a backward thing say for example if i am there i want to search the technology in the same from the end i want to search the word from the upper uh, upper thing we need to use the question mark symbol question mark symbol and followed by the word So it will take me to the technology. Okay. If you want to know how many lines are there inside the file, you just press the Control G. Control G will give you the number of lines inside the file. Okay. By pressing the Control button and combination of the Control G button, it will show you the total number of lines in the file. okay so if you want to go to specific line say for example if i am there in the fifth line if i want to go to the tenth line by doing that you need to do colon and or type the ten and press enter so by doing that you will navigate to the tenth line in the va editor okay say for example from the 10th line if i want to go to fifth line just press colon on y it will take you to the fifth line okay uh, <coughs> this is for the useful features of the va okay and if you want to go to the top of the line you need to press the control u and if you want to come to the uh, bottom of the file you need to press the control d control d it will take you to the last line okay just scroll up and scroll down scroll up means control u scroll d control d okay and if you want to delete a character just one character you need to press the x button if you are pressing the x button it will delete the a character from here okay and if you want to delete a word from the where your cursor is there you need to press the dw button if i am pressing the dw button the a d d e will gone from here okay yeah like this okay so if you want to uh, find a word and replacing with another word so how we, how we are going to do in the v editor for doing that you need to press the colon and search for the string that the s yes is uh, denoted as a search button so we need to search article like uh, for example technology or you take modern so i'm searching for a modern 
so the modern i am re replacing with the new 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 word okay by doing that and see for replacing the all recurrence of the current line what of see say for example the modern is there for two three times in the current line it will change the modern with the word new for all the occurrences if say for example two three times is there i am putting uh, it will uh, replace the all the occurrence in the current line okay by doing that so i have typed the colon and search button is yes for the search button i am searching the modern word and replacing with the word new and g is for the replacing the all occurrence in the current line so <coughs> when i type the g this thing sorry i need to be here for that because uh, i have not selected any line right so because of that i did not replacing it so i am doing it uh, sorry i forgot the percentage thing here so you put percentage yes and followed by the modern modern and i am going to replace with the new so it will replace the word new instead of modern so by doing that you can do the final replace okay so this is what the most useful features of the <coughs> va editor i am going to share the va editor command with you in the question and answer section so you can all copy and paste it in your local system i'm sharing it with you okay so the is the we have used most useful keys in the va editor so you just take it from there okay so the next thing i am going to show you the grep command grep is nothing but a <coughs> filtering option or search option it is basically search okay want to uh, exit the file without saving you need to press the escape and shift colon button and q q represents quit quit and followed by the exclamatory symbol it will not write the changes whatever the changes you have done it will just uh exit from the file without any changes okay so now i am going to show the grep command okay say for example in my current directory slash home slash ubuntu i have the two dot x i have the two dot x file if you want to what are all the files <coughs> say for example grab file star something if you want to search the file inside the search the word inside the file for that we are going to use the grep command so how, how we are going to do that so i am going to show the what are the file con uh, content uh, what are the content there in the file there are few lines are there okay so this is the file content of the file txt and file one dot txt there's some other thing okay so if you want to search the specific word in both the files so let's say example if i am taking the who okay if i want to search the word who from both the files i want to give the Text like grep followed by the word you want to search and the files whatever the files I I have said file dot star so it would search for the these two files only whatever the uh, file file after that whatever is there it will search all the files so currently right now I am I have it in I have two files only so it will search within the two files only okay so if you see the output it will first show the file name file.txt is having the who word if you see that 
content of the file one.txt it does not have the who word so it will only show the file.txt content only okay so i'm going to search the another pattern today i'm going to search so if you see today is there in file 2 and file 1 as well but it is showing the only one output why is that because by default linux is taking that linux is a case sensitive thing so if you want to search the word small letter you need to give the small letter if you want to search the capital letter you need to put the content in the capital letter so it by executing this command it will show you the content of the file 2 only it will not show you the content of the file txt file 1 txt content only it will show why is that mistake is two days i made a mistake two p cap and a y yeah so like this you will get it. so if you want to get the both the files content whether it is a case instead of digital case into you need to use a command you need to option the i option okay grip i find i i represent a case insensitive so if you are going to use it use i we call it a switch after whatever the iPhone is, uh, after whatever the character after the iPhone, we call it a switch. So if you go to use the switch I, it will give you the output for both the files. It is a case insensitive. So what the, the word, the exact word it will give. It does not look for the case, uh, whether it is lower case or this upper case. It does not look, okay. So this is what, so this is uh, uh, by doing it, you can get the content inside the file. You can search the file okay if you want to know the line number of the file you can pull you can add the n n you can add after i you can add the n it will show you the line number so from the file one.txt it will have it will come on the third line and in the file.txt it will come to come on the fourth line so it will give the line number okay so these these are the some useful features of the grip command Okay. So now I am going to show you the. So if you want to know how many lines are there inside the file without opening the file, okay, how we are going to do? Say for example, the file one. At file dot txt. How many lines are there inside the file? One, two, three, four, five. There are five lines are there. Okay. So you want to know the how many lines are there in the file without opening the file. So how do you do that? So I want to show you. By doing that, use the wc command wc space hyphen l and file name file dot txt so it will show the number of lines inside the file so file lines are there in the file txt if you want to know how many words are there in the file not the line how many words are there in the file so you need to use the wc hyphen w it will show 14 words are there in the file okay so like that you, need, you can get the information of the file how many lines are there how many words are there something like that you can get okay so so if you want to go to the uh, in va editor also you can uh, display the line number so i am going to allow to do that okay, one dot txt So, if you want to uh, show the line number, you can need to press the colon and set space number. If you do that, it will go along with the line number. Okay. The command is set colon set space number. Okay. What is the next command? 
so what is question i have finished so how to know what are the users are there already in the system so in windows you can go to that users group and you can see the thing right so in linux by displaying the content of the fast wd file you can come to know what are the users these are all the users say for root is a user daemon is a user sys is a user something like there are lot of users are there in my system i have created a ftp user and while in the webinar i have created tom user right that tom is a part of the user and sammy is a part of the user so by calling the file name cat etc Slash etc slash password. You will come to know what are the users are there in the server. Okay. Okay. So with this, I am stopping the webinar. If you have any questions, you can ask in the question and a window. Okay. I am stopping my recording as well.